Hey everyone. So we're here we are with the electric 3000 GT project. Uh, so we've got the car pretty level here with the laser. Uh, you can see it passes pretty much right through the center of the bolts that hold on the rear bumper. The actual rear bumper, not the cover. So then with the car level, we proceeded to also get the motor level inside the car. So we first brought it home. We measured the where the center of the axles go for these rear wheels when it's at ride height. And we've done our best to get these Tesla axles into exactly the same spot. So we set up this string here to line that up. The string's not perfect, but it gets us in close. And then we measure uh, by measuring between the mounting points on the motor itself and some of the mounting points for the car suspension, since these body panels aren't perfect. So after getting this uh, motor, this old motorcycle lift set up to bring it into the car, we've got a couple bottle jacks under there to sort of push things around and get them into just the right spot. We've got the top of all these pretty much exactly level within a couple tenths of a degree. Uh, the actual suspension arms and stuff are all at the ride height that we measured on another Model S. And then we've got everything squared up. So this is pretty much exactly where we want it to sit in the final build. We've also finished cutting out all the, uh, all the stuff we want to from the frame rails. So there's about half an inch of clearance along the top of the whole motor. So we've got these blocks in here so that we can push the lift up against the frame and that holds it right where it needs to be. And then with a little bit more convincing from the bottle jacks, it sits exactly level. So there it is. All the other mounting points are about the same sort of angle measurement. So we're pretty happy with that. And it works for... The other way is also pretty much right on. Again, pretty damn close. These rubber mounts are obviously not perfect. Since the mounts aren't perfect, we also checked with the laser level here against the subframe. So if you look at this uh, aluminum piece in the middle here, that's pretty much exactly level over that distance, maybe within one laser line. Zero, baby. I don't know if you can even read that with this guy for some reason. All right, so we've cardboard catted up the uh, part that's going to hold the rear mounting points on the motor onto the frame of the car. So the two bolts go into the motor mounting points, and then this thing gets welded into the frame rails, and it's going to be made of 2x3 box tubing. We've made some updates to the cardboard-aided design. That flat piece that was being used to mount it in the back has been turned into an actual segment of box tubing, as it were, along with adding a disc here to support this rubber. We've made a plate, or what will be a plate, to kind of tie that into the frame better. And that's all going to get welded all along the edges as best we can. And that extends across there. We're going to do the same thing that we did over there on this side. It should be as simple as just copying that plate and flipping it over. So then we've also done some mocking up in the front. This is all going to weld at all different points on the frame rails and the body and stuff. Uh, it's not complete yet, but we're still working on it. There's a bracket up here that the swing arms mounted up to that we're probably going to weld this on since that's pretty heavy and meant for this kind of thing. 
more or less. And that's how we're going to hold the front in. We're going to replicate on the other side and all that. And then up here, I've spent a bunch of time trying to get this to fit in that space. It seems good enough now. So we cut the one of the tabs off the swing arm mounts from the car, and we're going to weld a plate right up to where we cut it off. And then that'll support this bottom plate here and these vertical pieces back here. So we realized that the old rear cardboard support was kind of wasteful and that cross beam duplicated some other beams that we already have in the car. Um, and there was really no reason to have the other two pieces of box coming forward. So we designed a new mount. It looks like this, just without this hole in the front here. And that fits up around the frame rail, just more forward. And we can weld it all along these edges here and then bolt the motor into it on the bottom. The process that I used for converting the cardboard cutouts into steel cutouts was to first take the cardboard one, break it down into pieces. Since in the final cardboard mockups each piece was smaller than the bed of our document scanner at home, I scanned each piece there. That makes a really nice image that you can trace over. It's accurate to within better than a sixteenth of an inch. From there I took the image and dropped it into the free vector editing software Inkscape and just traced it over by hand and that produces these DXF files that we can send directly for plasma cutting.